Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to answer your questions and address your topics respectively because I'm diligent and wonderful in every conceivable way and if you can't recognize that, maybe it's about time we broke up, you know? Uh, there, it's out on the table. Take it or leave it. Um, but I want your shit out of my house by the end of the day. So there you go. Uh, anywho, that started off a little bit mean. Maybe we can, you know, have some makeup sex or something later, whatever. Uh, on to the first question. How about your stance on Israel, on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict from Jake O'Lantern 7? Uh, I don't know enough about it to give, you know, an encompassing academic perspective, uh, so definitely don't take anything I say about this as uh, fact, because I have no idea, but here I go explaining things I don't know anyway. So uh, there's definitely a fault on both sides. It seems as though everyone is either, you know, super conservative and like, Israel can do whatever they need to do because they need to be able to seize what's theirs, and then uh, Palestinian pro-people, way more liberal generally, are like, hey, the Israelis are, you know, killing innocent Palestinian uh, civilians, you know, that's not good, and really, this is just a false dichotomy. Again, both sides uh, doing awful, reprehensible things. Uh, not obviously, you can't say all uh, Israelis and all Palestinians are doing it, but uh, the aggressors are certainly uh, not helping the situation on either side. So I don't even know what position I take. I have no idea. I'd have to do more research. Uh, Chichik Fi. Um, religion. Uh, I've talked about religion before. I'm not religious myself. If you want to be religious, uh, more power to you, that's fine. Just don't attempt to dictate uh, my life according to your religion because that's just the highest form of arrogance, really. And they and it's always paraded around under the auspice of, uh, of humility. Like, oh, I'm just being humble and trying to follow what the good Lord tells me. And it's like, no, you're not. You're assuming that you know more about everyone else's life than they do and you're dictating what they can and can't do based on your belief. Like, that's kind of that's messed up, you know? That's like me if I really hated Brussels sprouts, which I do. Uh, that's like me demanding that it, that Brussels sprouts be taken off the menu everywhere. I, I don't care if people like Brussels sprouts. I don't care because I don't like them and I find them offensive and therefore it shouldn't be in my world because it's all about me. Me! It's all about my in-group and what we want. It's, it's just selfishness, really. Uh, but, you know, not all religious people are like that. And to uh, paint with such a broad brush is uh, not very intellectually honest. So, K. Flesher 57. Why it's hard to do things under pressure like thinking of a topic. Um... It all depends on the kind of pressure, really, because I can say that a lot of the time, anxiety and pressure, it makes me perform better with things. You know, if I'm anxious a little bit uh, about giving a presentation or um, doing something in public or even uh, back when I used to play ice hockey, if I was really, really nervous before a game, it would almost kind of incentivize me and I'd be a lot more focused about it. So in that way, it's good, but uh, it, it's all contingent on how prepared you are. If you're super nervous and you're prepared, uh, I find that the nerves kind of focus you and make it uh, easier to do things and achieve what you want to do. Uh, whereas if you're not prepared and you're nervous, it'll just subvert the entire effort and make you look like a damn fool. Uh, so yeah, and thinking of a topic, that's not too hard to do. Just name anything. I mean, I pretty much address all the topics, so hopefully that's not... I'm not putting you guys under too much intellectual strain asking for topics. Uh, I toast ninja. Do midgets freeze to the faster than normal people? Um, I have no idea. I, I would assume that they would not, but then again, heat rises, and that's science, and so that's what I'm going to base that on. Yes, they do freeze to death faster. Um, Dan Derps, you like Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2 zombies better? How do you feel about them not bringing back Dr. Flopper, Mule, Mule Kick, and no new Wonder Weapons? Uh, I like Black Ops 2 zombies better just because uh, we, you, when you compare it based on the game modes itself, uh, obviously, Black Ops 2 Zombies it has way more options and all that, but I am really, really disappointed about the, the lack of maps that we've seen and the fact that Nuketown Zombies still isn't available when uh, I thought I was going to have that when I first got the game, but apparently not. I didn't read the fine print, whatever. That was my, that was me overlooking it, but uh, the fact that they didn't bring back a lot of the perks was just, it was like taking a step in the wrong direction. It was like they, they worked their tits off to make Black Ops 1 zombies really great, even though all it was was survival, and then they were like, oh, well, we don't need to bring all these fun things back that the players love, uh, we'll just spend all of our time in these new game modes. Which is good, that's innovative, but at the same time, would it be that hard to throw in just the old special weapons, just the old wonder weapons? I mean, come on, that's that's half the fun, is hitting the mystery box and be like, oh, I might, I might get a cool alien weapon. And, you know, they brought the ray gun back, but it's gotten to the point that the ray gun doesn't even feel like a special weapon anymore, it's just standard. Uh, so, I am disappointed by that. I really hope that in the next DLC for Zombies, they bring back those perks and hopefully... Uh, bring back either some of the old wonder weapons or even better if they made some new ones. So, uh, yes. Matthew Braun, talk about Christmas music and whether you like it or not. 
Um, I, I don't know. I don't care for Christmas music, really. It doesn't matter if I'm in the spirit of Christmas or if it's Christmas Eve or something. I just don't like Christmas music. I don't like it. It's all the. It all sounds the same to me, and by the time it's, you know, Thanksgiving time, it's already so overplayed, it's just irritating. So, uh, yeah, I don't care for Christmas music. I mean, there's probably a few good songs out there, but I don't, I don't like it. Um, Tempery 5150. Who would you select in a celebrity death pool? Um, Christopher Lee, definitely. He is old as shit. He looks like he and Satan, not Satan, uh, that makes it sound worse. He and God, will say, are like having games of backgammon, you know, at, at night, or I don't know. He's so old, he probably doesn't stay up at night, whatever. But definitely Christopher Lee. I wouldn't be surprised if that were like uh, tomorrow or the next day kind of death pool thing. So uh, definitely, definitely Christopher Lee that shit up. Jack Foley, fart versus burp. Uh, well, fart is an expulsion of gas from your anus, and a burp is an expulsion of gas from your mouth. And uh, I don't know how you could verse them against each other, you know. Uh, I would say that the most powerful fart would probably be more powerful than the most powerful burp, but who knows, because there are probably a lot of people out there who can just s control their, their, their stomach and their lungs or whatever you need to, to cultivate a proper burp and then just have a huge one. So... Uh, I don't know. We, we need to, uh, more more research is necessary before I can come to a conclusion. Uh, Jack in fifty two high school sports. Uh, high school sports are great. I, I think it's it's good. It's important to be involved in some kind of extracurricular activity in high school, if for no other reason than to just stay in decent shape and to be active. Uh, you really don't realize how much those high school activities do to keep you active until you go to college, and then you're like, holy shit, I am so not active. I need to get out and do something. Uh, so. At the, on the same token, though, I don't like those people who uh, they just get way too into high school sports, and they think that it's it's so much cooler than it is. And uh, generally, the people who put too much weight into their success uh, in high school sports and whatnot are the same people who uh, maybe subconsciously realize that that's kind of the apex of their life, and that all of their you know subsequent achievements are going to be you know lackluster in comparison. So they're just kind of living it up in the in the moment, which is fine, you know, if you. Uh, if you want to do that, but uh, yeah, overall, definitely do high school sports. It's a great way to stay in shape. Um, Brit Boy Nine, testicular cancer or a vagina? Uh, what does that mean, man? I or a vagina? Do I have to? If it's if it's the option between getting testicular cancer and getting vagina, I would definitely rather get some vagina. Who doesn't like to get vagina? Uh, but if it's a question about would I rather have testicular cancer or have a vagina, that just doesn't really make sense. Because I assume when when it says vagina, that would just turn me into a woman. And so I guess I'd, I'd much rather be a woman than have cancer. That seems like a pretty simple option to me. And I would totally still have my male brain in the female form. And so I would just be the quintessentially most awesome woman ever. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and that is based on fact. So, <laughs> just kidding, probably. Uh, if I had female fans out there, more than like a handful, they probably wouldn't care for that comment. But whatever, they can take a joke. Kyle Mowat. Anal sex. Um, I'm in favor. I'm in favor of consensual anal sex. None of that uh, prison rapiness that is uh, two thumbs down there. Uh, zero out of four stars, says the Chicago Tribune, for prison rape. Uh, yeah, 